I am so excited to be here with you today. Uh, today, my goal for everybody here in the audience is to turn you all into AI search geniuses. So hopefully by the end of this, you are going to be some of the most well-informed, uh, intelligent people in the world when it comes to AI search. So let's just jump into it. So the big question right now in AI search is this. Is AI search fundamentally different from SEO? And if so, what do those key differences look like? So my name is Josh Bliskell. come from Profound. Profound is an answer engine optimization platform. We're a New York City-based startup. Um, the ex exciting thing about us is that we allow marketers to uh, understand, take real action on, and tangibly improve their visibility within AI search. So that's what we do. And I know the title of the presentation was that we analyzed over 10 million AI search results. We are a startup. We scaled much faster than we expected. The main data set we're going to look at today is actually covering 41 million AI search results. So 41 million prompts across ChatGPT, Google AI overviews, Perplexity, and Microsoft Copilot. And we're not hitting APIs. This is actual front-end data, front-end stuff. So we're very excited. Uh, we tested both commercial and informational queries. Got a good sample size. Excited about that. Uh, and I hope very sincerely that the findings today that I'm going to share with you are going to fundamentally change the way you think about search. So before we jump into that, let's level set for a second. Over the last six months, search has fundamentally changed. And I think the first alarm bell for a lot of folks was seeing that Google had actually decreased in its market share of the search market. Over the last six months, first time in decades, Google decreases. At the same time, the same six months, and this is probably the second and way, way bigger uh, alarm bell, ChatGPT's market share in the search market increased 400%. So it's safe to say here that search is undergoing this fundamental change. The way we get information, the way that people search, is absolutely shifting. So this is the old paradigm. The user visits the website. The website has the content for the user. The link is strong. The bond never breaks. This is a beautiful, symbiotic little system. We love this. But this is the new world. The AI model, the answer engine, uh, chat GPT, perplexity, copilot, call it what you will. Uh, it sits in between the website and the user. And the answer engine, it arbitrates what's true versus what's false. The answer engine summarizes your content. The answer engine decides if your brand, product, or service is even worthy of being in the conversation. That's so important. And so when the answer engine handles the interaction, when the answer engine is, is responsible for conversing with the actual person at the end, the answer engine handles that last mile delivery. And in effect, the answer engine owns the relationship. And so let's talk a little bit about how that ownership actually takes place. So ChatGPT's browsing is really interesting because it uses Bing substantially. So the search engine stuff of ChatGPT is kind of offloaded. All the SEO spam, a lot of the hard work. ChatGPT is very lucky in that way. So when you put in your five-paragraph query to ChatGPT and you send it off and you press enter, this is what happens. First things first, ChatGPT regularizes the query. Regularizes the query. What does that mean? It basically means that ChatGPT turns that five-paragraph five sentence prompt that you just sent in into five to seven keywords. So even at that stage, you, you already pressed enter, you've lost control of the search. The search isn't your, your question that you originally asked, it's what ChatGPT thinks you mean to ask. So even there, you've got some real differences. Second, we go over to the Bing API, ChatGPT has that partnership with Bing. The Bing API returns three key pieces of information. It returns the URL, it returns the title tag, and it returns a meta description. That's the three things that Bing sees. The coolest thing about this, I don't think anybody, like I've talked to a bunch of people about this. Very few people have said, oh, I know what you're talking about. Web GPT, and I'm not talking about search GPT. Web GPT is the final decision maker in chat GPT search. Web GPT was trained in 2021, pretty much no fanfare, no one cared about it. And it was trained to basically pluck out the resources, links, key pieces of content that it felt had the most utility. And when you're optimizing for chat GPT, you're not optimizing for ChatGPT itself. You're not even optimizing for Bing. You're optimizing for WebGPT, that decision maker in the process. Perplexity, if you thought ChatGPT is weird, perplexity is on a different planet entirely. Perplexity is semantic and uh, embedding based, so vector based. So when you put your five to seven sentence query into perplexity, perplexity is not using an answer engine. In, perplexity is not using an index. They're, not, they're doing their own proprietary indexing. They're not using a search engine. They're literally encoding your query and finding the single best match piece of content out of their billions and billions of web pages, their billions of documents. And Perplexity actually caches uh, those results. They, they actually have just like a cached directory of the web, basically. ChatGPT actually does live search. So 
When people say to me, AI search has some key differences between uh, traditional search, or you know, there are some differences, or there can be differences at times between traditional search and AI search, the thing that I say back to them is that it's not that AI search can at times be different. It's that AI search can't be the same as traditional search. We are talking about fundamentally different architectures. We're talking about fundamentally different systems. We're not talking about search engines truly anymore. And so when we look at this system, we have to, you know, we have to realize that if we're trying to compare answer engines and search engines, we're really comparing apples to oranges. Um, but don't take my word for it. So we did an experiment across 650 prompts. Uh, we asked the same questions to ChatGPT and the Google SERP, and the results were really interesting. I want you to take a second to guess. I built in a nice little water break for myself. Take a second, think about what do you think that overlap's actually gonna be? Refreshing. That overlap is 12%. 12% overlap between ChatGPT and the Google SERP. 12%. What that basically means is that 88% of your keywords, 88% of your backlinks, 88% of your domain authority is not porting through in these systems. That is so important. But let's talk about some of the things that these systems actually do love. If they're not porting through, what are some of the sources? Across, this is a data set of 177 million AI citations. These are the most popular domains cited by ChatGPT, period. First most popular domain, Wikipedia, by a factor of six compared to anything else. By a factor of six. The second one, perplexity. Perplexity loves UGC. So perplexity loves Reddit, LinkedIn, YouTube, Yelp. That's perplexity's sources. It wants to know what people are saying. My, uh, Google AI overviews, I love Google AI overviews. Look how fair that is. That looks so fair. A nice little distribution, not skewed in any direction. And then Copilot is off to the side doing their own thing because they like Forbes and Gartner, and that's what, for, that's what uh, Copilot's actually directing towards. So for looking at this, I think the question is, what drives those citations? What gets something cited? So we did another experiment across five key industries and 50,000 plus prompts. We're breaking away from that 41 million data set to do these little ones. We asked, where are the SEO metrics? Do the SEO metrics align with AI search? First things first, traffic. Traffic does not have a relationship with your citability in AI. That relationship, actually, technically speaking, traffic's relationship is accounting for only 5% of AI citations. So theoretically, yes, there's a tiny little relationship there, but traffic only accounts for 5%. What that basically means is that you have websites in massive multi-billion dollar industries that have hundreds of thousands of page views every month that never get cited. At the same time, you've got websites with 10 people viewing it every month that are dictating the narrative across multi-billion dollar industries. It's absolutely insane. Backlinks. If you think that backlinks have a relationship to AI citations, you are correct. It's just inverse. Uh, we found across 50,000 prompts, five key industries, that backlinks actually have an inverse, I know, and this is insane, but they have an inverse relationship with AI citability. Sites with fewer backlinks, on average, were cited more across ChatGPT, Perplexity, Google AI Overviews, and uh, Microsoft Copilot. So your typical SEO strategies, they don't apply here or they might not apply here. But I don't want you to make a mistake because AI search is still completely controllable. There are ways to control it. The first things first, technical optimization is gonna be a key for you. It might not look the same, but it absolutely is a key. Welcome to giving a shit about how you're indexed on Bing. This is such a foundation. If you wanna be seen on ChatGPT, you have to be indexed on Bing. It's foundational. If you're not indexed on Bing, you are not indexed in ChatGPT's custom index, OpenAI Search. They have their user agent, it's great. If you're not indexed by OpenAI Search, you're not gonna be cited. If you're not cited, you're not in the answer, and if you're not in the answer, you don't show up to the user. So you've gotta foundationally be indexed by Bing. The only thing more foundational than this is having a website, right? We've gotta at least have a website if we wanna get indexed. And people will ask me, all right, cool. So get indexed in Bing, and then I'm ChatGPT optimized, right? All good, right? Not the case. We did another experiment. We found that ChatGPT's overlap with Bing was only 26%. So it's not like just getting indexed means you're ready to go and everything's solved for you. You still have to optimize for these systems as if they're two distinct things. That doesn't port over one to one. And experientially, we released a site. We created a site, we made sure it did not get indexed on Bing. We made sure it did get indexed on Google uh, and all the other search engines. And we asked ChatGPT to find the site, go to the site. 
ChatGPT had no idea that the set was out there. Why? Because it was not indexed on Bing, it was invisible. AI crawlers. AI crawlers don't interact with JavaScript. Um, if your site is heavily client-side rendered, if you've got a bunch of JavaScript stuff going on, you know, that's great, but AI crawlers are not going to be able to see it. So any of that content that you want, answer engine crawlers, to actually pick up on, you're going to need to put that in the HTML. LLMs.txt. This is a new protocol. LLMs.txt is such a big thing right now. I am, like, warning you all. It is potentially your new best friend for 2025. This is the front door to every website on the internet. This is the 10 foot tall concrete stack of blocks that every answer engine a crawler has to crawl over to actually understand what your product, brand, or service is. LLMs.txt makes it so much easier to understand. It takes that huge block of text, we'll go back to it, that huge block of text. It turns that unsurmountable, kind of ugly thing, not sustainable, into basically a clear, defined map. Here's my key pieces of content. Here's where to find them. Here's why to click on them. That's what we're doing here. And we put that at the root of our domain, like robots.txt. It's the same kind of thing. It's markdown formatted. And if you're wondering, OK, it's a, new, uh, it's a new protocol. It's new. I bet it's not getting picked up too much. Within Profound, we can track this. This is what we do. It's getting picked up just as often as our own sitemap is getting picked up. So the answer engines are, in fact, using it. Semantic URL slugs. Let's talk about semantic URL slugs. Remember, ChatGPT, for example, sees three pieces of information when it goes into the Bing results, or WebGPT, rather. It sees the URL slug, the title tag, and the meta description. If your URL slug is full of codes and crap and it's not descriptive, you're losing on one out of three fronts. You're losing on one out of three fronts. So you need to make sure your URL slugs are descriptive, kind of marketing towards these answer engines. You need to make sure that you tell exactly what's in that piece of content, exactly why to click. It's all in the URL slug. Spoil your content in your meta description. I love this slide. I love making it. It's a little controversial. We were working with a customer in the corporate cards industry. This customer came to us and said, we want to rank number one within corporate cards. Why is XYZ page ranked number one? So we looked at the number one ranked page, uh, the number one most cited page, if you will. And we found that the meta description for that page was actually just calling out the best business credit cards are A, B, and C. When you offer answer engines value up front like that, you know, when, you're, when WebGPT is looking at the results and it sees that here are the best business credit cards, here's the value, that's a green, huge green flag for that answer engine bot. Basically says, here's the value. If you want to see more, click on my link. And it gets cited. It gets cited a lot. Content. Content is also king. Content is so important. If you take nothing else away from this presentation, take away that AI search is lazy. AI search is lazy. What I mean is that listicles and comparative content win in AI answers. Listicles and comparative content account for the single most cited form of content, period, within AI search. This is across another, this is that 177 million citation data set. So this is what's going on. The number two most cited form of content, in opinion at 9.9%. 9.9%. So we've got listicles at 32%, blogs at 9%. The gap is real. The verdict is in. The bias is here. Comparative and listicle content wins in AI search. And let's think about it. Let's think like an answer engine for a second. You know, if someone comes to us and says, what's the best men's running shoe? As an answer engine, what are we going to do? Are we going to go to Nike.com, Adidas, Puma, Under Armour? Are we going to look at every single page, every single review of every product page, form our own opinions, take a bunch of time? No. We're going to go to Dan's article here. We're going to grab the top three results for best men's running shoe. And then we're going to present that to the user as our own insight. Why? Because AI search is lazy. And you can see what happens when you write queries directly to answer those questions that answer engines need the information for. So this was a customer of ours. They're a fintech called Ramp. They released two strategic pieces of content in a month. Those strategic pieces of content were all AI optimized. And they allowed Ramp to take a position where it increased their visibility by 7x just by optimizing, writing those queries, offering value to answer engines directly. And you have to be very specific in that way. Answer engines have a recency bias. We were working with someone in the cybersecurity industry. They had the number one most cited piece of content in the industry. And they came to us a week later and said, hey, our number one piece of content is now at number five. What's going on? How do we get back up there? We looked at the latest top five pieces of content, 
And we found that those top five pieces of content had all been refactored in the last few days. So what did we do? We were like, hey, you should refactor it, add a few different points, make it feel like it's 2025 and it still was kind of 2024 dated. We refreshed it, this is back in February. Within a week, up top, back to number one, especially within ChatGPT. This is especially true within ChatGPT. And answer engines, they pick up and cite content on the scale of days and weeks, not months and quarters. So we were working with the customer, 1840 and co. They were in the remote staffing industry. They wanted to make a splash in that space. They had very little visibility, so we had them release a few strategic pieces of content. Within one day, I'm not even kidding, within one day, their visibility went from 0.1% to 5.2%. They were in one out of 20 queries about the industry. They were featured now. Within a week, they were within the top 10 most mentioned brands in the entire remote staffing industry. Multi-billion dollar space. Social media and UGC. Social media and UGC work situationally. Social media and UGC work situationally. We were working with someone in the cloud computing industry. And they were on Profound and they noticed something stuck out like a sore thumb. There was one page, one Reddit thread, that was influencing the vast majority of the narrative in their industry. So what did they do? They went to that page, they went to that thread, and they commented. And they commented on the second most popular thread, and the third most popular thread, and the fourth most popular thread. And what the result was, is that they took their Google AI overviews visibility from 23.8% at the beginning of the month to 73%. Literally, Google AI overviews can't stop talking about that brand. So what does all this mean for you as a, a marketer, as an SEO, as a professional? First things first, AI search is only going to continue to diverge. We are witnessing the birth of two distinct systems. Things like agent experience are gonna be the future, right? If you've seen Operator, you know that we're gonna have agents clicking buttons, moving through the front end of our sites, experiencing what's going on on the web, that firsthand too. We're gonna to be looking at widespread LLMs.txt. Certainly people who do development and wanna put their docs on, on the web to make them very digestible by answer engines, we're gonna see that. We're also gonna see shoppability grow. You know, perplexity is interesting because they are really the, they're the canary in the coal mine for a lot of these innovations. So perplexity, they were the first to web retrieval. They were the first to shoppability. And now they're doing their own proprietary indexing. If you ask me, it's gonna be pretty big. So, the reason for doing all this, the true canary in the coal mine, is this. Most brands are about to lose the majority of their direct connections to customers. Most brands. Because answer engines control that narrative. They are the ones that are interacting with the consumer now. That's the way that things are shaping. So now is the time to build your muscle. Now is the time to open a Google Sheet, to track a few prompts, to track a few queries. To, to throw a few queries in there and track them day by day by day and see who's shaping the narrative, who's being cited, where are your competitors? That's the key. And that's what we do at Profound. We track AI visibility day by day for our customers. We were able to show you how you're tracking across key keywords, competitors, topics that you care about. We're even able to show you how accurately answer engines actually talk about your brand, your products, your services, if there's pricing discrepancies, things like that. The reason I know why answer engines are so biased, the reason I understand that Wikipedia is the cornerstone for ChatGPT citations, is that we can show you exactly which pages drive the narrative. We can show you exactly who's being cited. And eventually, this is super exciting, we're gonna be able to talk about keyword volume. So eventually down the line, this is coming in the next few months, uh, we are going to have a tool that allows you to see what people are searching for within AI search, the actual information, the actual searches. So we're very excited to keep rolling this out. Um, you know, I want to leave you with a little bit of, you know, a little personal side. I came from HubSpot's SEO team, shout out to HubSpot. Uh, I know that SEO can be the, the black sheep of digital marketing at times, but I want to say that everybody in this room, everybody here today is in a prime position. Like everybody here recognizes that AI search is big. AI search is at least warranted paying a little, a little attention to. Everyone here has the opportunity to learn, everyone here has some really great inside information. So go out there, uh, make the most of it. Because I think in the next six to 12 months, AI search is going to be the most sexy area of digital marketing overall. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Good night, good afternoon.